Ah, okay, right. So, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu alayhi wa sallam. Ya alam rasalim wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yasir li amri wa adud u'latan min lithani yafqahu kawli. Amma ba'd. So guys, uh, good morning to everyone. I hope everyone is in good health. Right? Stay at home. Don't go outside playing around. Okay, uh, so as everybody know, we are in still uh, RMO restriction movement order. Uh, for the third phase is it so uh, somehow we have to continue our lessons online i know it's very hard for everyone it's also hard for me you know but uh, yeah it's hard for me you know i'm in front of computer talking to myself is really weird and but then i hope that everyone uh, can stay with me you know uh, to ensure that everything is uh, in the order so yeah let's continue our lesson so I believe I already finished on chapter chapter 3 uh, previously and now let's continue on the chapter 4 which is uh, the cloning so this chapter is uh, a very long chapter it have like like hundred slides but I hope that uh, we will be going to do it like uh, face by face, and I will today I will stop until uh, restriction enzyme, and I will do it like a, a little bit faster, and I hope once you watch my video and you have uh, uh, a question to ask or you have something doubt in your mind, you can uh, ask me directly either uh, by using uh, WhatsApp or uh, in a Google Classrooms. Right, so uh, this is the learning outcomes of uh, chapter number four. Uh, by the end of this topic, students should be able to first identify the process of gene cloning. Right, uh, so I, I think I already covered this, uh, how you want to make a clone, how, how to make a gene cloning. Right, I, drawn, I remember I, drawn for, I draw this uh, figure on the whiteboard uh, for each class. And I hope everyone to remember the, the process from uh, isolations, uh, cut by research restriction enzyme, clone back, right, using the eligase transformation, so on and so forth. And number two is explain the following term, which is you have to know uh, the term that we're going to be used in this chapter four. The first one is source of DNA, what is vector, what is restriction enzyme. What is ligations? What if bacteria host transformation as well as selections and recombinants? And also this one I already you know covered in my first lecture with you guys, and I hope you st you still remember uh, everything. Uh, yeah, right. So okay. Uh, once I finish this chapter, as I emphasize always in the class, you have to go back to this learning outcomes slides and try to make it. Uh, in the question form so you can you know answer the questions if you can answer everything means that you already know everything about uh, uh, the topics in this uh, chapter chapter 4 which is the cloning right let's move up into moving into the next slide which is introduction to the cloning right so uh, what does it means to clone so clone is actually a collection of molecules or cells which all identical to an organism molecule or, or cells, which, which means that it's like a clone. Have you ever seen a, a movie of clone, which is, you know, they have a two identical, uh, 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 two identical organisms or two identical humans, right? So if this person A have a mole uh, on, on the right side, and the clone also have the mole on the right side. So it's 100% identical. So it means a, a clone. That, that carry the meanings of the clones. And to clone a gene, it, to make many copies of it, for example, by replicating it in a culture of bacteria. So 
clone and to clone a gene is uh, almost the same, but it's carry a different meaning. All right. So clone a gene if it, 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 uh, meaning that you have your uh, interest genes, your YOI, your interest of genes, all right, and you take these genes and you clone it into a vector then you transform into bacteria and the bacteria will help you to amplify to make many many copy right so this that means many copy here right clone gene can be normal copy of a gene we call it y type and clone gene can be altered versions of the gene we call mutations okay in the clonings uh we usually have two uh, uh types of sample that you have to do you have to uh how to say um you have to uh what's the word you have to i can say you have to test right with for the first one is a wild type so wild type means that your gene interest you clone it into a vector right without any alterations of your uh, genes of interest right so when you clone it into a vector you transform into bacteria so this we call it wild type meanwhile a mutant is where your gene interest so this is your gene interest can you imagine this is your gene interest and maybe you have to do a mutation points all right so along the way the genes there is one part you have to do mutations and you do you did a mutations at this particular part and after you did uh, a mutations you clone it into a vector then you transform into bacteria so you have a mutant uh, uh, a clone gene okay so wild type without alterations but then a mutant you have uh, to alterate the, the gene okay it's recombinant the technology maximum manipulating genes is possible of course to work directly with a specific gene scientists prepare gene size piece of dna in identical copies a process called dna dna cloning so this is uh, what we call about dna cloning and the next one is cloning technology so cloning technology means gener generations of many copies generations of many copies of DNA template example recombinant DNA molecule that is replicated in, in the host right uh, for bacteria yeast or human cell or even in virus so it uh, been developed in the 1970s by two brilliant scientists we're going to see who is the scientist prior to the discovery of the PCR method so this DNA clonings uh, if you remember, I already uh, explained to you the function of PCR in the class polymerase chain reaction. So it functions to amplify the gene. So from one gene, the PCR can amplify to you like a thousand genes. So before PCR is invented, we use cloning technology to amplify your gene interest. So the first method to generate an unlimited supply of genes and many applications for uh, can be done by cloning technology for the for first one gene, uh, gene, genetic mapping in a sequencing mutation studies transformation genetic engineering and gen sequencing prior to the development of this technology then it was difficult to work with because it was hard to obtain sufficient copy number to visualize of the manipulate so it means that before 90s 1970s it's very difficult to do an uh, dna uh, research projects because you know it's it's very difficult to obtain sufficient copy numbers of uh, of the uh, uh, dna so if i if i mentioned before in the class uh, for example when we did uh, when we want to do a forensics right for forensic fields they have to amplify that particular genes right so to to allow them to do many tests biochemical tests so before uh, cloning technology is invented or pcr is invented it's uh, almost impossible for them to do and uh, or to amplify uh, in uh, genes of interest right <clears throat> then the next one is a dna cloning 
So the goal of DNA cloning basically to generate a large amount of pure DNA that can manipulate and study. So uh, I think uh, the definitions of DNA cloning is almost same as a PCR, you know, because uh, it, it wants to generate a large amount of pure DNA. Okay, so it's also it can apply for the uh, for to the definitions of the PCR, right? But the step in DNA cloning is totally different from a step in PCR. Okay, uh, so now let's see the step in DNA cloning. So the first one is isolates DNA organisms. Uh, for example, uh, extracts of DNA you know from human. It can be from human. It can be on bacteria from bacteria. It can be from virus. It can be for anything it's a living thing that have. DNA. Then the second step is cut DNA with uh, RE to desired uh, size, so restriction enzymes. Uh, the third one is splice or ligate each piece of DNA into a cloning vector to create a recombinant DNA molecule. So a uh, cloning vector uh, by definition is artificial DNA molecule capable of replicating in host organism, example bacteria. Okay, so during splicing or ligation, you might need a restriction enzyme, and you might need a vector, and you might need a, a, a DNA ligase to ligate between your gene of interest and the, the vector. And then after it becomes circular, after a gene of interest and vector is combined by ligase, become a circular, then you have to transform the recombinant DNA vector plus DNA fragments into a host, example bacteria that will replicate in make copies. Right? So cloning host, for example, if I mentioned in the class, we always, uh, we usually, right? Uh, researcher usually use E. coli is the most common host. For example, E. coli DX5 alpha. Right, so this is a uh, gene cloning goal to target enough copy of the uh, gene to manipulate. So from the gene, you will uh, ligate it in, uh, into a vector. So you clone the gene into the vector. We call it the a recombinant here. And transform it into the host. And the host will help you to amplify the interest of gene. Right, multiply. And start with few copies and end up with many many copies. So all identical to starting a gene, we call it a clone. Right, so uh, this is a diagram that I already explained to you uh, on the first lecture, if I'm not mistaken. So it's the same uh, diagram. You, you, uh, you uh, uh, may want to look it uh, later, okay? So I, I will not explain uh, this diagram. All right, so then let's go to the cloning of animals, all right? Uh, this is where uh, Dolly the sheep uh, is being made, all right? Animal were cloned more than 20 years ago. So there is a two technique that they use uh, in the cloning of animal. The first one is uh, embryo splitting. And the second one is uh, nuclear transfers. So let's go to the first one, which is embryo splitting. Right, so embryo splitting is actually come uh, uh, from a one embryo. So this one embryo will be cut into two, uh, will cut to form a half of embryo. So we make two embryo basically. And this embryo are transferred into an unreacted surrogate mother. So uh, if it's sheep, it will go to the sheep. Lah. If a donkey, we go to donkey. Lah. Okay, and then I uh, become pregnant, it's monitored by ultrasound, and uh, lastly, the sheep give birth to the identical twins. So basically, uh, this is the same uh, uh, phenomena that occur in human, right? So when there is a, a identical twins, or triplet, or duplets, uh, or fourplets, I don't know. Uh, it been de delivered by a mother, so they're exactly the same uh, uh, phenomena uh, happens, right? So, but then in these kinds of uh, research, is totally uh, I mean not not totally. Uh, the method is different, right? So, in this uh, cloning system, 
the embryo is uh, what we call it is uh, um, what is the word embryo ini di bahagikan secara paksa means that uh, human do it but then kat dalam human uh, kat dalam uh, 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 pre- uh, during pregnancy in human the uh, splits of embryo to two identical is not forced yeah it's not forced by uh, 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 anyone else but then it's kind of, in this kinds of research we force uh, the embryo to split okay so there is a lot of video in youtube you can you can uh, 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 surf and see how this embryo is being split into two uh, 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 embryo half of the embryo lah okay then it can form uh, identical uh, uh, twins but the identical is normally not a must so sometimes they will be identical sometimes they tak uh, they tak akan jadi identical right and the second one is cloning by nucle- nuclear transfer so this uh, cloning by nuclear transfer is basically how dolly the ships is been uh, produced okay so uh if you uh, it come from two different ship for example and this we call it a tissue cell donor which is cell from animal to be cloned are maintained in the lab so that they do not grow and divide which is so the nuclear is been removed from uh from the egg okay so nuclear been removed whereas the uh, satu lagi donor donor supplies unfertilized egg so egg ni it they tak fertilizekan lagi the same method they remove the nucleus but then up to this point the nucleus from uh, donor a will be injected into the the egg the second egg the uh, the, the egg from a uh, uh, a ship b but then they using a nucleus from a ship a so after being injected then uh, the reconstruct embryo grow for 7 days then after 7 days embryo 2 they can be implemented into surrogate mother then from the surrogate mother barulah terhasil dolly the, the ships so the methods is different <coughs> from the embryo splitting okay <coughs> right Then uh, next, let's go to the basics of uh, DNA cloning. So basics DNA cloning, I believe uh, semua orang dah tahu because I already explained it to you. But somehow we 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 will do, we will go through uh, one by one in very fast. Okay, so in the basic cloning, you might need as first the source of DNA, DNA that you want to clone. The second one, choice of vector. So you have to choose. You have to choose uh, which vector, which which suitable vector you might use to clone your gene of interest. And the second one, you have to have a distinction enzyme to cut the DNA and to cut the vector as well. And then you need DNA ligase to ligate both. DNA and your vectors and the whole cell in which the recombinant DNA can uh, replicate. <coughs> Alright, <coughs> then let's go to the source of DNA. So the first one, uh, you have to find your the source of DNA that you want to clone. Okay, so in here there is a four source of DNA that uh, you can get. All right, the first one you can obtain the DNA which is gene of interest from a gene libraries. All right, so gene libraries are made of pieces of the entire genome stored in the plasmid or phage. The second one you can obtain the dna of interest from c dna we call it a complementary dna so i hope that everyone see remember what is the meaning of a, a c dna 
and is made from the mRNA by reverse transcriptase, so enzyme found in the retrovirus. So this mRNA, as, as I already explained to you, is intron-free. So there is no introns, only exons in the cDNA. And then the third one, uh, amplified DNA using primary chain reaction. So you can get the, obtain the gene of interest from the amplified DNA uh, by using a PCR. And the last one is a synthetic DNA. So synthetic DNA is uh, made by DNA uh, synthesis uh, machine. So you know uh, the sequence of the DNA and then uh, you synthesize it by using a machine. <laughs> Any? No? Yeah, I'll buy the last one. Yeah! Yeah! Yeah, they can work from the home. Yeah! Please don't mind the sound. Right. Okay. Uh, then let's go to the vector. <laughs> Vector and oligonucleotides. So, sal, we have the room So, you, you know, you have to know how to manage your time for your kids, for your house, for your house. I mean, uh, how, what, uh, I mean, the tasks that you be assigned by your wife in the house, you have to done it. And you have to entertain your kids, you have to play with your kids, you know, you have sometimes you have to cook. Uh, you have to entertain your wife as well because some orang duduk kat dalam rumah just so murung kan dalam masa dua minggu ni alright <coughs> vector and oligonucleotides ok so this is a cloning uh, a specific gene so you have to choose a cloning vector so bila you dah, uh, uh, dah you dah obtain your DNA alright you tahu gene of interest you then you have to choose uh, which suitable cloning vector that you uh, have to use to ensure that your recombinant DNA is working. Okay, uh, the first one is plasmid. So plasmids, it can be a, a bacterial plasmid. Lah. So uh, usually uh, it can, uh, uh, how to say, cater a hundred kilo per insert. So if your gene of interest is less than 10,000 Vesper, then you can consider to use a plasmid. Then the second one is lambda fitch. So lambda fitch is, is a virus. So if you have a bigger inserts, you might consider to use lambda fitch because it can cater around 10 to 15 kilo per of inserts. Okay, so if you have a bigger inserts all right you have the, your 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 gene of interest is much bigger then you might consider to use a cosmic so cosmic ni adalah combinations of plasmids and fish so it can uh, cater around 45 kilo best pair of inserts so you can imagine how long the inserts okay so usually uh, in human genome project they use a cosmic right to cater a, 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 a very long of human DNA and also, you can use a bacterial artificial chromosome. So this is back up to uh, 300 kilo base pair is much bigger. And this artificial chromosome up to uh, 1000 kilo base pair. Okay. So in human genome project, they basically use a, a BAC, not a EAC, because yeast is uh, the 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 uh, efficiency is very low right so they doesn't use uh, uh, yac so much and as well as uh, human artificial chromosome is up to uh, twenty thousand kilo best pair so it's very large amount that can cater by using a hac and the last one is expression vector expression vector is mainly used for expressing the the protein so all of this is a type of the vector that you might consider to clone your gene of interest before you transform into a, 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 a bacteria into expression uh, host. Right. So, do you remember Boyer and Cohen? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
right? Cohen, Boyer and Cohen, these are two brilliant scientists that develop the techniques uh, of a DNA cloning. Uh, so from uh, the slide, previous slides, uh, this one. So cloning technology has been developed by uh, in 1970s. So the orang yang developed this cloning technology is uh, these two brilliant scientists, which is Boyer and Cohen, right? So Boyer and Cohen, ni, the history is that. Uh, Diorang use, uh, diorang use restriction enzymes to cut the plasmid uh, from the bacteria. You know, F plasmid, right? Fertility plasmid from bacteria. So, uh, plasmids uh, carry a selective marker. So, selective marker ni macam I, I explained to you. Uh, Last time, it consists of an antibiotic resistant, right? So when Boyer and Cohen cut the plasmid uh, using, if I'm not mistaken, equal uh, one, uh, so equal one, they dapat satu linear uh, of uh, genes plasmid that uh, contain origins of replicates and also the selective uh, marker gene. So, bila dia dah dapat ni, when it cut by equal one, equal one, they can circulate the back. So, because it's blunt end. So, uh, after this, I will explain to you uh, how blunt end and sticky end when uh, uh, happen after restriction enzyme induced. So, bila dah lagi balik, so baru bukan ni uh, realize that oh dia dah buat satu plasmid yang yang bagus. So the first experiment that both of them conduct or uh, conducted is this one. So uh, they use amphibian DNA double helix, uh, which is from uh, Katak uh, Xenopus. So they try to cut uh, a ribosomal gene, uh, a ribosome RNA and cleave with amphibian DNA using restriction enzyme equal one. So, bila dia dah cut, so, dia, dia akan ligate kind, uh, ikut, uh, apa ni, gene of interest ni, code uh, uh, for ribosome, kat dalam plasmid. So, this is the origin plasmid yang orang uh, prepare lah. We call it PSC101. Okay. So, PSC101 ni, bila dah cleave also with equal one, baru dia boleh ligate dengan gene of Interest and it become recombinant plasmid. So, if you have time, you can uh, right, yeah, you can visit this uh, genome news network, right? So, guys, ni banyak lah dia kita pasal uh, uh, all the how to say uh, project. And all the uh, uh, researcher, yang ane mahu ada create and what soon kan, yang ada outstanding uh, research, research lah. So semua ada kacian dalam history, so you can read it lah. Okay, GNN, GNN, Genome News Network. Right. Okay, so plasmid cloning vector. So, bacterial plasmid is naturally occurring small satellite chromosome, circular double-stranded extra chromosomal DNA element capable of replicating autonomously. So, bacterial plasmid ni, uh, basically, uh, maksud satellite kat sini, mak maknanya dia uh, lying uh, uh, daripada uh, DNA of the bacteria. So, means that dia it's uh, how to independently, independently plasmid. Dia tak sama dengan DNA of, of the bacteria. So that's why we call it satellite chromosome. Okay. And plasmid vector engineered from a bacterial plasmid for use of cloning. So ni tadi lah yang uh, uh, apa ni? Uh, Boyer and Cohen ni buat. So plasmid vector ni engineered from a bacterial plasmid for use of cloning. So daripada bacterial plasmid ni, for example, uh, F plasmid 
fatality plasmid. So they engineer and become a plasmid vector. So this is the features of plasmid vector usually have lah. So the first one it should have origin sequence. So already quite for replication means that uh, dekat dalam circular of the uh, uh, vector dia ada satu part kat sini nama dia origin. So origin ni must have in every vector sebab apa? Sebab origin ni is the place where then a replication will start. So we call it ori lah. And number two is selectable trait uh, that enable E. coli that carry the plasmid to be separated from E. coli that do not have, for example, antibody uh, resistant. So ni tadi uh, selective marker lah macam ketika selectable trait ni sama macam selective marker. And the third one is unique restriction enzyme. So dekat dalam uh, vector tu tadi, if you remember, there is ada satu part, we call it MCS, multiple cloning site. So multiple cloning site is where uh, restriction enzyme is placed. Okay. So kat situ lah, uh, MC, MCS tu lah adalah di mana restriction enzyme tu uh, berada. And the last one is a simple marker, right? Simple marker ni, uh, for example, kat sini dia bubur Lexi gene lah. So Lexi ni is code for beta beta galactosidase, right? So beta galactosidase ni, simple marker ni, uh, dia macam ni. So kat dalam vector ni, satu part kat sini, dia ada Lexi gene. So Lexi gene ni, dia actually termasuk dalam MCS. So dekat dengan MCS multiple, multiple cloning site ni. So bila uh, multiple cloning site ni tak dipakai, okay, means that leg gene ni akan present. Okay, akan present. But then bila kita nak clone kita punya gene of interest kat dalam vector, we have to cut down uh, some part of the leg Z, leg Z gene ni. Me, uh, dia akan membuatkan leg Z ni is not functioning. So without, uh, okay, this is vector. So without any gene of interest, Lexi is working. So means that kalau you transform hanya vector kat dalam uh, transformation host you, Lexi beta galactosidase ni will be produced. Okay, but then bila masukkan gene of interest you, Lexi ni some part of Lexi ni might be disrupted. Okay, so bila you dah masukkan gene of interest you, you transform dalam bacteria, beta galactosidase takkan desynthesize. Okay, so beta galactosidase ni ada function dia. Okay, well, I will explain it to you in, in uh, later in this uh, slide. Okay, uh, next is plasmid vector. So plasmid vector are normally 1.2 to 3 kilobase pair and contain ORI, a gene that permits selection, selective marker and exogenous DNA can be inserted into the bracket region. Bracket region ni means that ni lah, uh, uh, multiple cloning site. So this is a multiple cloning site. So they have ORI and they have a selective marker here. And origin of replication is a DNA segment recognized by the cellular DNA replication enzyme. Without replication origin, DNA cannot be replicated in the in the cell. So origin ni kena ada lah uh, kat dalam vector. Kalau tak ada origin kat dalam vector, means that uh, vector ni tak akan di uh, uh, amplify. So tak akan di replicate uh, uh, enzyme or DNA polymerase or whatsoever tak akan recognize. Uh, uh, the, uh, the vector without any origin region and this is the selective marker so, so I've been emphasized this uh, so many times so the functions of the uh, antibiotic registered marker and multiple cloning site as well so multiple cloning, cloning sites uh, contain a uh, uh, the many cloning vector contain a multiple cloning site, polylinker lah, okay? a DNA segment with several unique sites for restriction endonuclease located next to each other. So, okay, for example, this is MCS. So, kat dalam MCS ni, dia banyak ada, ada bak mesh one, 
dia ada Hindi 3, dia ada Salwan, Eco R1, uh, SMA1, SPH1, XBA1, KPN1. So, uh, this is all research and enzyme. Okay, so bila you tend to do a cloning, you have to choose which registration enzyme that suitable for you uh, suitable for your gen, gene of interest okay so for example uh, you nak pakai bam h1 then uh, bam h1 apa lagi uh, dunia partner then maybe equal one yang sesuai so you pakailah bam h1 you pakai equal one so yang lain ni you tak dapat tak payah pakailah so bila you masukkan bam h1 you masukkan equal one dia akan cut dekat the exact positions okay so, bila dia dekat exact positions, baru you boleh masukkan you punya gene of interest. Okay. Uh, multiple insight. Target gene can be introduced into the cloning vector at once of the restriction sites present in the body linker. So, ni tadi lah. So, this is your vector. Sorry, excuse me. And this is your gene of interest. So, you cut with equal one, equal one. Yang ni fragment you tak pakai lah. And only this fragment that you uh, might be use. Then, dekat vector pun, kalau kat sini equal one, yang ni pun dekat dalam vector pun, mesti you pakai equal R1. Sebab apa? Sebab dia uh, baru compatible lah. Baru dia recognize. So, you cut dengan equal one, equal one, equal one. Uh, dia akan, uh, uh, fragment yang ni akan buang, tak pakai. Baru you boleh ligate in during DNA ligase. Right. So, plasmid ni ada juga disadvantage. There is a lot of disadvantage using of plasmid. Okay. The first one, it cannot accept a large fragment. Okay. This, this is a bacteria plasmid lah. Size, sizes uh, range from 0 to 1 uh, kb. Standard method of transformation are insufficient. So, it depends. Sometimes plasmid ni senang je nak buat transformation. It depends on the person lah. Okay. Tapi, uh, what I can say, uh, the efficiency of transformations is different from each plasmid and each host. So, kalau plasmid ni sesuai dengan host yang you pakai, for example, uh, bacteria, so, bila you transform masuk dalam bacteria, kalau dia compatible, Baru dia efficiency dia tinggi. Right. So, this is example of plasmid vector. Right. So, uh, this is example of uh, cloning vector. We call it part 19. Right. Part 19. So, sebab apa nama dia part 19? You cari sendirilah. Okay, so in part 19, the first one, it have ORI. So this is origin sequence. Okay, and then they have an ampicillin resistant marker. Alright, so here, ampicillin resistant gene. And they also have leg Z. So part of the beta galactosidase gene. Right here. So if you tengok, uh, macam I cakap tadi, uh, Lexing gene ni exactly kat dalam multiple cloning site from here to here kan so kalau you uh, 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 do a cloning you cut for example using eco R1 and Hindi 3 the fragment will be shifted ok it depends sama ada di shifted in ataupun shifted out macam uh, yang I ajar you last time lah so bila you dah Cut guna equal R1 and Hindi 3, the fragment tu akan kacau. Betul. So, bila dia dah kacau, when you insert your gene of interest, uh, you have to calculate actually, right? Uh, supaya uh, band tu tak, uh, gene tu tak shifted, uh, vector tu. So, kalau kalau dia ada tendency nak shift, tendency nak shifted, you kena masuk dekat, uh, you kena masukkan uh, 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 nucleotide base pair yang lain supaya dia boleh read in 3 p in, in codon lah in one codon by codon by codon so bila lexin ni dah kacau you dah clone barulah beta galactosidase ni takkan di synthesize ok 
okay so this is multiple planning side now we call it polylinker so equal one other side one kpn so on and so forth Right, so this is features of part 90 plus vector. So, macam uh, saya cakap, uh, vector, each vector have their advantage, have their disadvantage. Uh, we have to know whether the vector have a, a low copy number or high copy number. Okay, so it's very important for you to figure it out before you plan your DNA cloning uh, experiment. Okay, so part 19 plasma vector is high copy numbers uh, in E. coli, which is 100 copies per cell, provided high yield. So, means that, ayat ni maksud dia, part 90 ni, dia senang untuk di amplify. Okay, so dia, uh, dia akan tawarkan diri, oh, amplify like saya, amplify like saya, so like that lah. So, bila dia dah amplify, easy to amplify, it will give, provide you a very high yield. And selective, selectable marker is ampicillin. So ampicillin is grown, made and prevent growth of all other E. coli that do not contain plasmid. So this is selective marker. A cluster of several different registration sites called polylinker occur in the lag Z beta, beta galactosidus gene. So other vector yang ada lag Z gene then other vector yang tak ada lag Z gene. So this is the, the lag Z gene is exact, uh, actually is being engineered. Dimasukkan kat dalam vector tu. So ada function dia eh. Mana kita akan, saya akan terang what function dia. Okay. A clone DNA disrupt reading frame of the beta galactosidase production. Okay. So added uh, x gal to the medium, turn blue in presence of beta galactosidase right so a plug growth blue means that no inserted dna whereas white inserted dna okay maksud dia macam ni so uh, if okay this is the vector susah weh susah nak lukis <laughs> okay macam ni Okay, so uh, this is the, the vector lah. So if the vector you tak clone kan dia, means that you, you, tak, you tak insert your uh, gene of interest, you clone empty vector masuk transform dalam bacteria. Okay, so bila masuk transform dalam bacteria you, for example E. coli, and after transformations, you... Uh, growth the transformance bacteria on the plates that contain exgal, right? So exgal ni adalah uh, um, substrate for beta galactosidase. Okay, so bila beta galactosidase use of exgal yang kat dalam plate itu tadi, okay? So let's see ni kan? Let's see ni. Uh, uh, when, uh, it will be sent, uh, it will be synthesized to the beta galactosidase. So beta galactosidase ni akan uh, use the exgal. Okay. So if there is the exgal kat dalam medium tu tadi, and beta galactosidase is being produced, the colony of E. coli will turn blue. Okay. Can you? Can you S W white screen. So 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 so. Okay. So you can you can, you play tongue asini. Sorry, gambar tak tak. Okay, good, nice, nice picture. Right. So kalau you tengok kat sini, there is the two colonies. Alright. The first one is blue color, and the second one is white color. So uh, of course, dalam media media ni media plate ni ada S gal. And all this bacteria has been through transformation. Baru, buat, baru melalui transformation lah. So, for those koloni yang warna biru-biru ni adalah empty uh, vector. Which is, tak ada insert you. So, it means that 
uh, beta galactosidase is being produced in this uh, colony. Okay, so bila beta galactosidase produce, it, it, dia akan pakai exgal tadi, dia akan tularkan warna biru. But then, yang white color ni, it means that the leg Z is been, uh, gene is been disrupted. So, it been shifted. So, means that beta galactosidase tak produce. Sebab apa? Sebab ada insert you. You dah masukkan insert tu. So, uh, beta galactosidase, uh, leg Z punya gene ni dia dah shifted. Okay. So, dia tak, it's not functioning. So, disebabkan you dah keluar masuk you punya gene of interest. So, sebab tu color dia warna putih. So, uh, in summary, it means that yang warna biru ni tadi adalah negative transformant. Whereas yang warna putih ni tadi adalah positive transformant. So, kalau you nak further your experiment, you hanya ambil yang warna putih ni lah. Yang warna biru ni tak payah pakai. Okay, faham eh? Kalau tak faham, nanti you, you whatsapp saya balik, I will explain it to you. This one is better picture. Sama juga picture dia. Okay? So, nampak ni. So, this is like Z. Ni multiple cloning site. Okay, kat sini. So, bila tak ada, uh, uh, bila you tak clone, so like Z gene ni tadi akan di synthesize jadi beta galactosidase. So, jadi warna biru. Tapi bila you masukkan uh, you punya uh, gene of interest, you dah kacau dia punya uh, reading frame of the like Z. So, beta galactosidase tak akan produce. So, uh, uh, means that it carry your gene of interest. So, jadi warna putih. Right. Sikit lagi ni. Okay. Oh. Uh, finally, plasmin are transformed into E. coli by chemical incubations or electroporation. It shock disrupt the cell membrane. So, yang ni usually kita pakai untuk yeast lah. Okay. Good for uh, less than uh, 10 kb or clone insert more than 10 kb. Typically are un unstable. Okay. Ah, ah, patutlah tak baca nombor tujuh ni. Okay. Some percents of digested vector will re-annul with no inserts. So, maksud dia macam ni. Okay, ni vector you. So, bila you dah cut guna digestion enzyme kat multiple cloning site you, sometime uh, open up ni boleh ligate sendiri. So, dia akan jadi circular balik. Okay. So, means that uh, dia boleh self-ligate. So, Uh, you punya gene of interest tak boleh nak masuk Okay, the self ligate to, So, ni maksud dekat uh, Vector will re-annul with no insert So, how to tackle this problem? Right? Macam mana kita nak ensure that Vector yang kita cut tu tak re-annul balik So, boleh cut dia macam ni saja Dia tak re-annul balik So, by remove 5 prime phosphate With alkaline phosphatase To prevent recircularization This also will eliminate Some of the blue So, this is uh, the process, okay? So, for example, this is part, part 18, right? This is multiple cloning site. So, ni, ni multiple cloning site punya sequence lah. Okay, so you cut dengan Hindi tree. So, bila cut you dengan Hindi tree, dia akan macam ni lah, terpisah macam ni, alright? And, I hope you ingat lagi lah, uh, This is uh, hydroxyl and this is uh, phosphate, phosphates, right? Phosphates. So this is usually five prime. This is usually three, three prime. Okay. So phosphate, phosphates, ni, right? Very active, right? So phosphate, five prime phosphates ni tadi, dia uh, usually dia akan sometimes akan self ligate. So dia akan ligate balik sendiri. So, apa is very reactive. Okay. So, how to prevent uh, the uh, uh, the vector is being uh, re-annealed back? Okay. So, we treat with alkaline phosphatase. Uh, uh, usually come from calf intestine lah. Uh, lembu punya intestine. Okay. Ataupun bacteria punya intestine. Uh, bacteria punya <laughs> alkaline phosphatase. So, bila kita treat dengan alkaline phosphatase, It will remove the phosphate groups here and here. Okay. So, bila dia dah remove phosphate group ni tadi, barulah 
dia takkan recycularize balik dia takkan reanil balik so vector tu akan terbuka je lah macam tu ok so bila you nak buat uh, clone bila you nak ligate balik dengan you punya uh, gene of interest then you have to mix your gene of interest with T4 uh, DNA ligase so bila you uh, mix you punya gene of interest di DNA dengan T4 DNA ligase that can uh, uh, apa ni uh, uh, remove balik uh, OH group ni tadi jadi phosphates right then baru dia boleh ligate ok so insert that phosphate group will ligate to the uh, vector lah ok so uh, this is uh, the method uh, to avoid self ligations of the the vector by treating with uh, alkaline phosphatase right <laughs> then problem 2 reverse reversion oh, so this is the problem 1 and problem 2 reverse orientation directional uh, cloning so it's help to prevent insert to be cloned in opposite orientations use two different restriction enzyme resting restriction enzyme located in the MC, um, MCQ, um, MCS Okay, so maksud dekat sini, kalau boleh, it's advisable to use two different restriction enzyme. So, point A cut dengan uh, restriction enzyme A, point B, restriction enzyme point B. Kalau boleh lah. So, tak, tak, tak perlu sama. So, equal 1 dengan bar mesh 1. So, equal 1, equal 1 boleh. Tapi, bila you cut equal 1, equal 1 dia akan self to uh, dia akan increase self ligations of the vector. So kalau you cut equal 1 dengan bar mesh 1, dia punya cara cutting tu different. So bila different, it's difficult for them to self ligate. Itu maksud dia. Okay. So for example here, uh, you, dia pakai sini equal 1 dengan not 1 lah. So kalau pakai equal 1 dengan equal 1, dia possibility untuk dia uh, 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 re-annul ataupun re-ligate ataupun re-circulize balik tinggi right, so kalau you pakai equal arwah dengan not one uh, dia takkan ni lah uh, uh, apa ni, self-ligate sebab apa? sebab cutting side dia totally different faham ya? right ok Fixed lambda cloning vector. So this is a vector that use uh, uh, ni lah a virus. So engineered versions of vector uh, fixed uh, lambda infected E. coli. Central region of the uh, lambda chromosome linear is cut with the restriction enzyme and digested DNA uh, is inserted. Then it is packed in the uh, fish head to the, uh, to form a virus particle. Fish with both end of the uh, lambda chromosome and uh, 70, uh, 37 and 52 KB uh, insert replicate by infecting uh, E. coli and it will produce a large quantity of 35 to 52 kilo base uh, uh, cloning DNA like plasmid vector large number of restriction sites available for fetch lambda so cloning uh, cloning vector useful for large DNA fragment then part 19 and plasmid vector so ada lah contoh ok so dalam uh, fetch lambda cloning vector ni is actually uh, mostly almost the same lah sama ada you pakai uh, fetch uh, lambda cloning vector ataupun uh, uh, normal part nanti plasma vector sama je lebih kurang cuma nya fetch alpha uh, fetch lambda cloning ni dia boleh cater a bigger fragment than a fragment lah uh, uh, gene of interest ok uh, sama juga ok this one uh, usually located in the head of the uh, fetch lambda lah ok sebab tu dah ada left arm dah ada right arm so uh, apa ni uh, that, for example here ada 15 kilo base pair yang not necessary for uh, lambda replication so kalau you pakai you terpotong yang necessary part which is important part for the uh, fetch to uh, multiply reproduce so they, they tak akan uh, help you to amplify your gene of interest so you have to ensure that 
this around 15 clue base pair is not necessary for the uh, uh, lambda phage to replicate. So, sama juga you guna the essential enzyme, a gene of interest pun you potong guna essential enzyme and you masukkan the exact length of 15 clue base pair masuk ke dalam ni. Then you pack of the uh, lambda particle using protein and enzyme from in, uh, alpha uh, lambda infected into E. coli. You masukkan kat kepala dia. Then, dia akan masuk dalam E. coli. So, bila masuk dalam E. coli, dia akan force the E. coli to uh, amplify your uh, gene of interest. Uh, kalau you ingat lagi, uh, dalam lytic cycle and lysogenic cycle, so dalam lytic cycle ni, bila virus sudah invade uh, bacteria, dia akan control the, the whole system of the bacteria. So, lambda tu tadi agak okay. Sekarang ni, uh, you have to uh, check out the check out get coli itu lah. You can amplify a punya uh, DNA. So, it can amplify and it can amplify pula-pula banyak-banyak-banyak DNA. Okay. So, that's why we call uh, lambda D and DNA. Okay. Uh, next is cosmic cloning vector. Alright. So, uh, cosmic cloning vector ni features of both plasmid. Uh, cosmic ni macam tadi lah. Mana dia, mana dia, mana dia, mana dia. Arik. Sorry, yeah. Cosmic is basically a combination of plasmid and pitch, right? So plasmid tadi ni lah, plasmid from here dengan pitch. Around 45 kilo base pair can be inserted. Okay, so... Yeah, cosmic cloning. So do not uh, do not occur naturally, lah. Uh, which means in circular form. So ori origin sequence uh, for E. coli. So sebab apa dia kena order origin ni? Sebab dia masuk dalam E. coli lah. E. coli kalau dia nak DNA replicate, it must have an origin site. Okay, they have selectable marker, they have restriction site, they, has, they have pitch lambda cost site permits pa packaging into alpha pitch and cruise into E. coli. So, ada juga, <coughs> apa ni? Uh, so, this is the cost sites. This is ORI untuk uh, plasmid and the cost site for uh, lambda lah, for pitch lambda. And useful for 37 to 52 kilo base pair of in, uh, DNA insert. Okay, phosmid based off on the E. coli bacteria F plasmid. So that's why we call it phosmid. Can be inserted up to 40 kilo base pair fragments of DNA. But the problem is, phosmid ni the low copy number. So macam I cakap tadi, low copy number ni uh, is difficult for them to be amplified. So bila dia masuk dalam bacteria tu, uh, application amplified of the plasmid is not been enhanced. So, the lambat lah sikit. Tapi kalau uh, high copy number ni sekejap je dia akan amplified, prepared, prepared untuk you buat banyak. Okay, phosmid offer high stability than comparable high copy number than cosmids. Of course, dia akan offer you a very good stability but then, still it will give you low copy number compared to uh, uh, apa ni, uh, cosmid the high copy number, tapi dia tak stable. Okay, contain other features similar to the plasmid or cosmid, such as origin, sequence, and poly, polylinker. Alright. Okay, then next is yeast artificial chromosome. Alright, vector that enable artificial chromosomes to be created and cloned into yeast. Okay, so features, uh, ni you boleh baca lah. This telomere at each of n, this uh, centromer sequence, so on and so forth. 
and this is bacteria artificial chromosome X, a vector that enable artificial chromosome to be created and cloned into the E. coli. Yang ni dalam yeast lah. Clone masuk dalam yeast. Yang ni suan clone masuk dalam E. E. coli. So features ni pun you boleh baca sendiri. Okay. Next we go to the expression vector. Okay. Allow a clone segments of DNA to be translated into protein inside a bacteria of eukaryotic cells. Okay. So the vector will contain the uh, apa FF kan FF ni A in vivo promoter and pcelin selection marker and as well as sequencing of the primer so sekarang ni kita nak play vector lah so vector produce a large amount of specific of protein permit studies of the structure and functions of protein can be useful when the protein are rare cellular components or difficult to isolate so expression vector ni uh, is basically uh, macam cakap tadi it can be bacteria it can be yeast it can be uh, 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 virus or it can be human so you can pilih ikut kesesuaian ikut ikut objective you lah okay and uh, types of exp expression system so bacteria dalam tu ada ada plasmid ada phage so yeast and expression vector usually plasmid ataupun the pakai boleh pakai uh, which is artificial chromosome and insect cells usually we use uh, bacterial virus of uh, of and plasmid okay so bacterial viruses is type of expression system lah plasmid in mammalian <coughs> viral expression uh, vector we call it uh, virus lah uh, uh, gene usually mainly we use in gene therapy uh, ni contoh lah SV40, vaksina virus, adenovirus and retrovirus and this is stable cell line lah, stable cell line CSO and HEC293 so this is the name of the stable cell line alright, <coughs> then shuttle vector shuttle vector ni uh, can replicate into two different organism example bacteria and yeast or mammalian cells and bacteria they have an appropriate origins of replications. Hence, one can clone a gene in bacteria, maybe modify it or mutate it in bacteria and test it function by introducing into yeast or animal cell. So, shuttle, shuttle vector ni, dia boleh pakai kat dalam bacteria boleh pakai, kat dalam yeast kot boleh pakai, ataupun dalam mammalian pun boleh pakai. Okay, so it, it no, it, it, it suitable. Uh, from different uh, expression hosts ok, dia boleh pakai da uh, dalam expression host yang berbeza-beza that's why we call charter vector ok, last part is restriction enzyme ok, restriction enzyme enzyme that cuts DNA at a specific nucleotide sequence known as restriction site ok, and it found in the bacteria and have involved to provide a defense mechanism against invading viruses. So actually uh, restriction enzyme ni dia punya function adalah uh, acts as a defense mechanism. Tak saja bukan saja antibiotics, uh, restriction enzyme ni also can act as a defense mechanism. Macam mana bila virus sudah invade and uh, cell recognize oh ni bukan uh, apa ni particle or bukan DNA or bukan protein daripada sel kita. So restriction enzyme Please help us to fight uh, uh, with the intruders. So, bila sesi enzyme dah produce, dia akan jumpa dia kan kat, 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 kat lah. All the protein yang tak, yang tak dijemput masuk dalam sel lah. Okay. In bacteria, they selectively cut up foreign DNA in the process called restriction. Okay. To cut the DNA, restriction enzyme makes two incisions. Each strands of of the DNA double helix. So of course lah sebab DNA ni uh, dia punya shape adalah double helix. So have to cut the DNA make the two incision lah. Okay, <coughs> palindrome in DNA sequence. So genetics palindromes are similar to the verbal palindrome. So palindrome maksud dia macam ni. So kalau uh, uh, 5 prime to 3 prime kita baca G A A T D C 
So palindromes of the GATCC is it read like inversely. So G G A A T T C sama je actually. So G A T T C ni tu balik kan? Dekat three prime to five uh, kat uh, three uh, kat three prime to five prime. Dia just terbalik daripada form 5 prime to 3 prime. Sama saja. So, dia panggil palindrome. A palindromic sequence in the DNA is one in which the 5 prime to 3 prime base pair sequence is identical on the both strands. So, it's identical. Okay. Restriction enzyme recognize and make a cut within the specific palindromic sequences known as restriction sites in the DNA. This usually four to or four to Two or six base pair sequence. So, dia boleh jadi empat ataupun enam lah uh, the maximum of the nucleotide sequence yang code for the restrictions enzyme. Okay, over 3,000 have been identified. So, ada, actually ada 3,000 of uh, restriction enzyme or more sekarang ni eh, ramai orang dah, 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 dah jumpa restriction enzyme yang baru. More than 600 available commercially tapi hanya 600 saja yang diguna pakai untuk commercialize untuk kita buat DNA cloning. Routinely used for DNA modifications and manip manipulation in the laboratories, right? Okay, restriction enzyme ni uh, scan the DNA sequence macam yang cakap uh, dulu lah. So, dia exactly macam uh, DNA polymerase. So, dia akan baca the nucleotide sequence tu. Okay, so sama juga. Restriction enzyme protein tu tadi dia akan baca okay, ni DNA, dia akan baca DNA tu. So, bila dia baca DNA tu, dia jumpa a specific nucleotide sequence that code for that particular restriction enzyme, dia akan potong. Yang dia kenal lah. Dia potong, 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 potong. Betul-betul macam bentuk macam gunting lah. So, it make a very specific cut. Okay, <coughs> then restriction enzyme. Okay, restriction enzyme ni, kita panggil endonuclease type lah. Okay, there are the type, type 1 and type 2. So, type 1, multiple subunit, both endonucleases um, and methylase activity cleave at random up to 1000 BP from recognized sequence. Whereas, type 2, more single subunit cleave in a within recognized sequence. And the type 3, a multiple subunit lah. Sama juga macam type 1 je tadi. Endonucleases and methylases of about 25 BP from recognized site. So usually kita pakai type 2 lah. Okay, single subunit, clear DNA within recognized site. So specific point. Okay. Okay, uh, this is example uh, HIL-3. Okay, HIL-3 is a tissue enzyme that search the DNA molecule until it find the sequence of four nitrogen bases. So yang ni yang dia buat lah. Okay. So, dia akan cut around here. Okay. So, one of the recognized sites uh, was found by HAE3 could go to work cutting cleaver DNA. So, bila dia jumpa recognized site dia, dia, dia akan cut lah. So, GG dia cut. So, sama juga kalau boleh pada 5', uh, five prime, GG dia akan cut. Okay. So, bila dia cut, you should, uh, this cut produce what scientists call blunt end. Sebab apa? Sebab dia uh, cut dengan sekata. So, this cutting, we call it a blunt end. Okay. So, okay, ni tak ada apa. Uh, how how uh, this is an enzyme is been named. Okay. So, this is blunt end and sticky end. So, Remember how uh, H3, HA3 produce a blunt end? Eco R1, for instance, make a staggered cut and uh, produce a sticky end. So, ada dua uh, research enzyme ni boleh potong uh, 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 dalam, da, potong dan produce dua kebaran kalian. The, the first one is blunt end, the second one is sticky end. So, for example, tadi dalam HA3, they cut blunt end. Okay, blunt end, dekat tengah, -tengah dia akan sekata macam ni. But then, kalau sticky end, for example, ikut R1, dekat bentuk dia berbeza. Dia tak nampak, okay, macam ni. Okay, kalau blunt end, dekat selari. Uh, sorry, dekat sekata. Tapi kalau sticky end, dekat kat sini, dekat kat sini, so dia, dia, dia akan terbuka macam ni. 
Kalau blend end macam ni Tapi kalau sticky end dia macam ni Alright So itu beza antara blend end dengan sticky end Right so I think I stop uh, until here uh, Ligation I will continue in the next class Right so uh, hopefully if you have any questions that you tak faham yang you rasa nak tanya you ataupun yang membuat you risau uh, doubt about everything you boleh uh, either directly whatsapp saya ataupun uh, you can uh, leave a message at the google classroom lah okay and i will upload the video on the classroom you can watch from there lah. okay so i'm going to see you on uh, next a week right and we will start from the ligation parts okay until now i hope everyone stay safe stay at home so enjoy your mco period of time right so thank you so much assalamualaikum